Good afternoon, everybody. We will get started in just a few minutes, seconds here as we are gathering up for midday prayer. Uh, I am so glad to see you all here, uh, see you in, in terms of the chat. I'm glad that you have um, taken a little bit of time off from what I'm sure is a hectic kind of a day uh, to be with your fellow disciples and to hear God's word, reflect on it, sing about it, and then pray for those in our congregation and in our lives that need to, to feel God's healing presence and touch. And so we'll start together with our prayers as we breathe in the breath of God. And we breathe out our cares and our concerns. And we breathe in the love of God. We breathe out our doubts and our despairs. And we breathe in the life of God. And we breathe out our fears and our frustrations. Today's reading comes from the book of Acts, the third chapter. And it begins like this. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon. And a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the beautiful gate so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. I love this story. Uh, the story that on the surface is a beautiful story happening outside of the beautiful gate uh, of one of Jesus's children being, or God's children being healed. Now this man had never, hadn't really been abandoned. He had been cared for by others who did what they had always known to do, which was to bring him to the gate so that he could ask for alms to be given to him. And that's what he's doing when Peter and John come by. And yes, ultimately, he is healed physically, right? And if that were all this story were about, that would be a wonderful, beautiful story and a promise of hope for all of us as we await healing ourselves, right? But there is so much more that's going on in this interchange between Peter and John and the man at the beautiful gate. First of all, it is a story about connecting, about seeing somebody and being seen, right? Because Peter and John could have just walked through the gate and passed the man by, but they didn't do that. Instead, they engaged with this man. And then 
This is a story about inviting them into this man into a relationship, about our being invited into a relationship even. Because they look at the man lying there, and they say, look at us, engage with us, let's make eye contact. And they invite him into a relationship. They invite him into a relationship with Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Christ. And it's a story about how in that relationship with Jesus the Christ, we are freed from that which separates us from what the world sees as being a fully, as a, being a full person. Because see, this man couldn't go into the temple. He he couldn't go he couldn't go to church in our vernacular, because he was considered unclean and he would have defiled the holy space had he walked in it or been laid in it. He couldn't walk. And they. Through the power of Jesus, Peter and John show him that in Jesus, he can be healed and freed of that which separates him and can be fully God's beloved. And that is such a gift. It is such a gift indeed. Because this really is a story about our life in Jesus. Uh, about it's, it's more than the story of Jesus in the manger, which is an important story because it tells us about how God broke through the heavens and became one of us. And yes, we've heard a lot about Jesus and we hear a lot about Jesus in the Bible itself and stories and, 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 and events that happened within his life. And yes, we profess that we await his coming again. And even yet, this is a story about God who connects with us, who invites us and who frees us from all that keeps us bound. And that's such a gift, even in this time of COVID and of all kinds of restrictions and of all kinds of what seems to be limitations on our lives. There is no way that God's love for us and God's grace and mercy for us will ever be limited. And that, for that we give thanks to God. Amen. Our friends at Trinity Camp Hill are going to help us give that thanks as they talk about God's amazing grace uh, and the freeing power of God's amazing grace. So hear them as they sing, and then we'll get back together and pray together.
You are forever mine. Thanks be to God. Amen, right? And now we join together and we pray. Source of unending love and amazing grace, we give you thanks for the gift of this community of faith, for this time that you gather us together each weekday for prayer for the ability for us to hear of your amazing grace, to live in its, in its presence, and to sing praises to you for the gift that that grace is. We ask for your healing presence to be among those um, on our prayer list, those in our hearts and in our minds, uh, specifically Luke Collins, Noah Hall, Jan Hinkle, Dorothy, Greg Warner, Beth Webb, Margaret Folkemer, Shelley McLaughlin, Laura Dareth, Terry, Ben Lehman, Howard Fales, Rebecca Neal, Jeff, Jack Overton, Glenn Hardesty, Kim Brady, Carol Brzezinski, Betty Crandall, Connie Koss, Charles McCarthy, Susan Bethke, McKenna Day, Thelma James, Esther Merson, Barbara Dareth, Debbie Moss, Jane Cox, Kirsten, and those that we name aloud or silently in our hearts at this time, Steve, Pastor Kelly, Pastor Jody, Your grace and your mercy, God, gives us the gift of life forever in your presence. And in that gift, we have hope. And we ask God that that hope be a soothing balm for all those who um, are grieving the death of loved ones, um, either those who have died by the virus, those who have died for whatever cause, um, and specifically with Diane Schwartzman, and her family and friends on the death of her grandmother, Edna Taylor. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the gift of your amazing grace. And now we pray together the words that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we breathe in the breath of God. We breathe out our tension and our turmoil. We breathe in the love of God. And we breathe out our haste and our apprehensions. And we breathe in the life of God. And we breathe out our work and our worry. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace this day and every day. 
Amen. Um, I will see you on um, Tuesday, probably, of next week. Pastor Tamika will be with you on Monday. God bless. Have a great weekend. Bye now.